Hi, this is your Sapil Bhartia and welcome to your Let's Talk. Today we have with us once again Scott Gerlach, CSO and co-founder of Stackhawk. Scott, it's great to have you back on the show. Swaggle, super, super good to be here. Thanks for having me. And as before the recording started, we were talking about, you know, uh, you folks are busy, you were at AWS reInvent as well, and you announced uh, GitHub Insights there. We'll talk about a lot of things today, but before we go there, just remind our viewers, what is Stackhawk all about? Yeah, totally. Stackhawk is an application and API security testing platform, enabling you to uh, automate testing of APIs and applications and really specializing helping developers understand what those problems are so they can get to the ultimate problem of fixing those problems uh, and making sure that you can produce safe software very quickly within your organization. Now let's talk about uh, your presence at reInvent. What was the experience there? What was the theme this year? And then we'll talk about the announcement that you folks made there. Yeah, I think the team or the theme this year was uh, crowd surfing. There was an insane amount of people there. It was really a an exercise in how do you navigate through the the uh, waves of people. A really great conference this year. Um, we had a larger booth this year, so we could effectively serve the t-shirt masses audiences uh, that came to the booth who wanted to learn about Stackhawk and of course get one of our super comfy t-shirts. Um, but it was, it was really fun. Uh, we had a larger team this year. We talked to a lot more people. There was so many people at the conference and a lot of people were really interested in API security testing. And then we also launched our new GitHub insights at, uh, reInvent as well. And people were really, really excited about what that, what the possibilities of GitHub insights are going to lead to. Now let's just, uh, go a bit deeper into, uh, GitHub insights. Yeah, for sure. So a brand new feature for uh, Stackhawk in the platform, really helping security teams connect what code is being written to what applications are being produced. So obviously the very first problem in application security or one of the first problems in application security is what things do I have to test? Now, because of our deep, um, we heart developers uh, background, we always think about code repositories as the source of, source of truth for all of that, what applications are there in the organization. So what we built is a way to connect to GitHub uh, repositories today, and then be able to map those and help create applications in the Stackhawk application, Stackhawk platform, so you can test those thoroughly. As well as see insights into how often am I testing this application versus how often is it being developed? So you can see if those get those things get out of alignment uh, and then who's working on this thing. So one of the other challenges is who can I go talk to about this application or code if there's a problem in it? This helps connect that, that divide between security teams and, and engineering teams. And then the last part uh, that we announced at the show was, um, an AI component of GitHub Insights. So being able to take AI, we do this, take AI, inspect the repositories, look at what's going on in that repository and going, hey, we think this is an application. Hey, we think this is an API based on what's going on in this repository and you should probably be testing it. Let us help you get to the point where you've got it all set up. And if you don't know what it is and you need somebody to talk to, again, there's that connection point Here's the last person that made a commit in this in this repository. You can go talk to them about what it is. Hopefully they know, and they probably do. Um, but then getting yourself to, all right, I've got this configured setup and working under test in Stackhawk, helping you give uh, confidence in what you're building is secure. You know, future looking versions of this are, hey, a new repository spun up. So probably a new application coming out the door. Who's working on it? Let's go talk to them so we can get in sync with engineering and security teams much earlier in the process than happens today. When you look at security, sometimes, uh, I mean, I don't want to generalize that everybody, but most people think about, you know, it's kind of react, reactive, it's like response, you know, to sometimes it's also proactive, you know, like you have seat belts and you have airbags in the car, you have parachute in the plane. But do you also feel that by you know 
capabilities like GitHub Insights. We will also enable empower developers. You know, I'm not talking security team essentially, that instead of having a lot of gates put up by the security teams, there are some guardrails so they can you know freely innovate. They can do a lot of things without having to worry about stepping on the toes of uh, security teams. So what I'm trying to look at it is to just flip the security and instead of thinking of it as blocking innovation, by these tools you actually empower developers to, to, to be able to do things that they want to do more comfortably and freely. What, what yeah, are your thoughts on that? I, I think you hit the nail on the head. Like there's a talk that I've done a bunch of times talking about racetracks and uh, how much security you see at a racetrack. It's like everywhere, right? There's safety in walls and fences and how the cars are built and the safety harnesses and the roll cages in the cars. And how do you keep the spectators safe from crashes? But the main point of the whole thing is going fast. And that's how I kind of think about uh, or how I advocate security teams should think about what they're doing help the product go fast, build in safety nets and, and protection mechanisms that help people make good decisions, but also help the product go fast. So, you know, in this particular case, you're talking about making sure that the engineering and security teams are a little more connected on what's happening, be able to test in CI, CD, get yourself to the point where you're informing developers of intelligent, like here's a problem, you, developer team who can are the only ones that can fix it can also triage this thing figure out what's the problem is hopefully fix it but move on with the job of creating value for the company by producing code and put it in our production and that's you know that is the core of how stackhawk thinks about it how i think about it um and we see a ton of people moving this way right the whole shift left movement uh when people are coming to our to our product to like check it out see the see the product in action, ask us about how it works. The very first thing they're saying is, we need to help our development teams go faster, but we also wanna do security. So both of those things are super important. And the only way you can really get them done is by connecting those two teams. Let's look at it from the business's point of view that uh, of course security, everybody wants security, but once again, it slows things down. Uh, so despite the want, they don't implement all the right practices because it's, they don't see the value immediately. So talk a bit about uh, the business value through GitHub Insights. So of course, not just like saving developers time, security teams time, but just to kind of relate it with the with, with the business, with ROI, with, you know, with, because it's year end. So let's talk about the books as well. Yes, that sounds great. So, you know, the, the ultimate, the ultimate goal of the business is to create value for customers. The thing that's pushing speed is the ability to get to market quickly. So if you think about cloud technologies, CI, CD specifically, the ability to write some code, compile it, build it, deploy it, get it into customers' hands quickly so that they can uh, derive value from it. That's the whole point of technology in a business uh, is to be able to do that quickly and before your competitors do. Now, if you can't, if you can do it fast, but it turns into a car wreck and everyone goes flying through the front window, okay, that's macabre. I, I take that back. If you get, if you run over the nails in the driveway because you didn't go check the driveway and the car's tires are flat, uh, then you're not gonna get to market very fast. However, if you have a process that enables both teams to be aware of what's happening at all times, so as you integrate testing like you do other testing, right? Feature CI, integration testing, uh, unit testing, that's all integrated in CI and it's feeding back to development teams. Is this thing working correctly? If we think about security testing in the same kind of fashion, test in CI, feed back to development teams, let them understand and fix those problems, it's just testing, but it's the security version of testing. And if we think about it the same way as we think about other testing, it becomes this like much better paved and uh, nail, nail swept up road of how to get that code into production and get value to, uh, to customers. And that is the business value of why making technology exists. Initially, we started talking about AWS reInvent. Uh, and this year, there was a lot of focus on generative AI, you know, SKU and a lot of other things were there. Uh, I want to also talk about generative AI uh, in, in the context of 
of course, uh, stack hawk security. At the same time, let's look at it, generative AI for security and security for generative AI workloads. The thing about generative AI is it's A, going to be useful for people to save time. Uh, B, still has inherent risk. And C, is just going to contribute to this explosion of APIs across the internet. Every time you start talking to a generative AI endpoint, it's an API itself. And people are starting to wire those AIs or APIs together. So we're already talking about an explosion of APIs across the, across the landscape here. Generative AI is going to add to that. Now there's a ton of benefits that come out of that, which are include, how do you write code better? How do you, in Q's case, how do you write uh, data queries better across multiple data sources? Um, but the thing that has been proven so far and is a documented thing is sometimes those uh, generative AIs are introducing new problems, introducing new vulnerabilities. Now I'm not saying don't do that because absolutely do that. What I'm saying is test it. Right, make sure that your that what's generative AI is helping you go fast again, and it's helping you get to the end goal. Make sure that it's not introducing new problems, and you can do that through testing. And then the last part there, you know, testing uh, generative AI LLMs. If you think about the way that you uh, interact with an LLM and the way that you could potentially test it, we think Stackhawk is well positioned in this market to be able to test that. Um, looking at inputs that go into an LLM interface and seeing what comes out. That's kind of the only way you can really security test an LLM because it relies on being creative and coming up with uh, output based on what you're doing with input. And that is exactly what Stackhawk does. So we're very excited about uh, the possibilities of being able to not only use generative AI, the explosions of API that that's going to create and the creativity that goes along with it, but also uh, the ability to test generative AI prompts to make sure you can't do stuff like prompt escapes and um, data data retrieval, those kinds of things. So we're thinking about that really deeply and we're, we're pretty excited um, about the kind of possibilities there. I may be totally wrong, but we did not hear that many scary stories related to uh, security that we used to hear earlier. Uh, is it is it because that uh, the media, the press is just tired of it because there are so many other things happening? Uh, you folks, do you also do some surveys, some reports to understand uh, where the market is today because of the year end? So, and from your perspective, have you seen that security has gone that gotten better, or you see that hey, actually this year these kind of threats that emerged, threats are becoming more sophisticated, new kinds of threats are emerging. I just want to get the state of security from your perspective. Yeah, totally. State of security. Well, how long is our talk here? Like a two-hour, three-hour thing? See if I could summarize really quickly. Uh, we're definitely seeing more attacks, and specifically more attacks around APIs. And when we're talking about that, we're talking about usually authentication and authorization type problems. So can an attacker get access to customer databases? Can an attacker chain uh, pieces of information together? Uh, and I think even though you haven't heard about it in the news, there are more of those things happening. And that's mostly because of proliferation of APIs. More APIs, more attack surface, more ability for attackers to go poking around in it. Um, so I think that's happening. I think why it's not in the news is there's a lot of other stuff happening in the world that may be preempting people's concern about API attacks. Um, I, I bet you could off the top of your head, think of two or three. Um, so I think that's why maybe you're not hearing about it in the news. Uh, we're, we're commenting on tons and tons of those kinds of stories, whether they're, um, breach notifications or incidents or, uh, whatever. And I think there's even a survey out there that said API attacks, API security problems were double or something higher than that from last year. So it's a thing that's out there. Um, maybe people are getting tired of hearing about it. I don't know. Uh, but there's definitely, there's definitely more APIs, more surface area out there. So that is for sure a thing that's happening. When we are talking about, you know, earlier you're talking about enabling developers, enabling, you know, security teams, you were at AWS, of course, that audience was totally different. But uh, if you look at the end of 2024, how 
content you are, where you see that organizations, they understand the risk. Uh, they also understand that, you know, the tools are there, but they also need to have right practices, right culture in place so that they have like, it's like a very well-rounded approach towards improving their security posture, or you feel that no, a lot of work has to be done. And if you feel the work has to be done, in what area, is it culture? Is it availability of better tools? Is it availability of maybe, you know, uh, the whole, you know, top down, just having a CISO or DevSecOps label is not enough. Yeah, no fair. You asked me like 14 questions right there. Let's okay, let's start from the top. I think. I think if you look at what's happening in executive suites, especially in public companies, the SEC teeth around security are getting uh, really sharp. So the requirement to be able to report breach information to SEC from public companies is a thing. Uh, so that's making a lot of executive teams and boardrooms way more aware of the need for uh, understanding and building in security. <clears throat> To your point about people and process and technology, uh, we've been out, I've been giving out, giving talks this year, really helping people understand those key three pillars to being able to do shift left kind of momentum to be able to build good process and procedures around security testing by involving people that are responsible and required to be able to make things functional and make them perform correctly uh, and understanding the tooling that can help enable that. So if you look at kind of how cloud started, right? So you think about the cloud services that were out there, people were like, oh, this technology is awesome. It's gonna change how everything operates. And then we didn't change how the people interact with it and the process to build software. And it turned into, it was just more expensive. But then once people were like, oh, actually we should change how we build software and include different people and different roles in, in how this works. Now it turns into, it's much more cost efficient to get to market because of that technology and the process that we redesigned to get there. And that is starting to happen in security, which is super exciting. Uh, there's a lot of really great tooling out there that helps kind of enable this shift left uh, process and you got to get the people involved to be able to change the process so that it works correctly to really get the benefit out of it. And, you know, it's, it's, there's work to do there, right? Sometimes we have a little bit of a broken relationship between engineering teams and security teams. So you got to do a little repairing of that relationship. But once you get to that spot, you've got much better insight as a security team as to what's being built. What's the risk? How is it benefiting the company? How can you help development teams uh, understand that risk, manage the risk, and development teams have a better view of what security is working on alongside of them instead of in some black box somewhere where they just magically show up today with a pile of tickets like this big and go fix all these now. We live in a data-centric, data-driven world. We live in an API-centric, API-driven world. What are the new workloads that worry you that, hey, we are not ready for secure, uh, to secure those workloads or you're like, nah, things are you know evolving at their own pace? Yeah, I mean, there's so much technology out there. You know what I mean? Like you've got Kubernetes and, and container clusters and, and workloads and VMs and data lakes and somebody said data swamp the other day. I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, but there's so much technology out there and there's so much security technology that goes on top of that. It's really hard to kind of understand, you know, what goes where, how do you benefit out of it? How do you get the most out of that tool? Um, and how does it help organize risk around the company as a security team? Um, and, then, and the other problem there is, you know, we, we talk about this uh, security team to developer ratio and the commonly accepted ratio there is one security team member to 100 developers. Pretty hard to keep up with that kind of uh, headcount pace, let alone development deployment pace. So the, the really the great way to get that, um, get that kind of under control and, and help scale out the security process you're not gonna be able to hire 100 security people for every 100 developers. Not gonna happen. Uh, what you can do is help them make better decisions with better tooling. So you, we kinda got our security teams, as security folks, we have to get out of this mentality of, I can't share information, only I can know, 
Uh, it's too sensitive to tell other people because they'll use it against us. Now there are companies, businesses, government organizations where that is a thing, but most companies are not in that place. So think about how do I engage my other team members, whether that's engineering or accounting or uh, data operations, how do I engage them so that we can work together to make security risk management, not risk elimination. We're not trying to eliminate risk, We're trying to manage risk, make that really effective across the organization. When you're talking about your managing risk, uh, when we look at security, as you're already discussing about that, it's more like kind of react to something may go wrong. We do prepare, uh, but it's still security is not a product, it's a process. Uh, the bad guys have to be right only once. Good guys have to be right all the time, 100% times. But are you also seeing that we are, we are still in a phase where, you know, security is more like, hey, you're trying to put guards, we're trying to protect. Are you moving in a phase that, you know, things are like, good example is airbags or brakes, which are there to stop bad things from happening versus reacting and responding to them? I think security teams are historically great at detect and respond, or at least very good at detect and respond, because it's kind of a thing that you can do by yourself. Like a security team can ingest a bunch of logs, look at firewalls, look at WAFs, look at kind of all this external traffic, what's happening on our workstations and our workloads, uh, gather all this information and do detect respond work. Like I said, I think it's great, if not really, really good. The thing that's very hard for security teams to do is work with other teams and have a perspective of what they're trying to get done and how can security help or at least not hinder what they're trying to do, right? How do I help design systems that are a little more fault tolerant, a little more data protected, data protective, uh, a little more risk adverse? Again, not risk zero, turn everything off. That's the only way to get risk zero. Um, but working together with those, with those counterparts, now you kind of got to start where your most risk is, right? So if you're a digital technology company and you're protecting HIPAA data and you're providing APIs around it, probably the biggest risk there is the APIs and the people that have access to the data. Start there. If you're some, a different kind of a company, you got to figure out, you know, what makes the company money? Why do customers ask about it? And I would challenge the Security is not a product because if you do a, if you're in any kind of B2B, uh, business to business kind of a system, one of the very first things you do before you buy software or something from another business is go tell me about your security practices. That either helps the deal get done, helps the deal get done quicker, or it doesn't. So I think that that's kind of part of a part of the product. Um, but really, really encompassing, you know, where is my risk? How can I help those people make better decisions so I can start moving down the chain to, okay, this is lower risk. How can I help those people? This is lower risk. How can I help those people? And make sure you're, you're using a risk-based approach to how you're attacking risk in the organization. Scott, thank you so much for taking time out today. And of course, talk about the GitHub Insights, uh, your you know, presence at AWS you know, reinvent and, you know, uh, great insights about the whole security landscape there. And as usual, I would love to chat with you again. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Swan. It's always great to be here. Thank you for having me once again. 